Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen and this is my channel. So a couple things before we start. First of all, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who has sent me so many emails and direct messages and the comments that I've got on my last two videos about my binges and my rough week last week. You guys were so supportive. I was so nervous to share that with you guys because I know sometimes YouTube can be a very harsh place and a very critical place with a lot of negativity, but I honestly, I did not delete any comments, I did not block anyone, so seeing how very few the negative comments were and how so many supportive comments, overwhelmingly supportive comments. You guys are amazing and I value you guys so much. I never want you guys to think that you're not appreciated because I do appreciate you so, so much. So thank you to all the people who have reached out, all the comments, the prayers, the best wishes. I appreciate it so much. And I'm repeating myself. Um, yeah, but I'm just to let you know, yesterday was a, a much better day for me. And I woke up this morning, and today, I think today is going to be an even better day. I have a new project I'm going to be focusing on, and I have some renewed hope for the future, and everything's looking brighter, and I feel better about myself. And that's a big part to do with you guys. So thank you very much for your support. Okay, secondly, I'm just going to point out the obvious because somebody is probably going to ask what happened to my nose and what happened to my nose. I actually scratched myself and it's a funny story. Um, usually when I lay in bed at night and I'm on my phone, I lay on my back and I have my phone above my head and I started drifting off to sleep and I went to drop my phone and I went to catch it and I scraped my nose in the process of trying to catch it. So that's what that is. It's a scratch on my nose. I'm sure somebody would ask in the comments. So just letting you know what it is before anybody asks. So I guess that's a lesson to either go to sleep sooner or not hold the phone above my head. One of the two. I don't know. Maybe both. All right, before I get into answering the questions, I want to let you guys know that this is a collaborative video with Amy's Life Journey, and I will leave a little card somewhere right in here where you can pop over and watch her video. She's doing a question and answer video as well, so you can pop over there and watch her video, and I will also leave a link in the description below for her channel to go check her out as well. She's on a weight loss journey. She does all the amazing merch and can personalize anything for you. She has a business doing that, so go check her out as well. I have my morning drink with me. This is my Teamy Skinny Tea, the drink that I make. I fill this jar about halfway full of ice, and then I pour my steeped Teamy Tea in. I let the tea steep until it cools, and then I add it to the ice, and then I add half of a bottle, maybe a little bit more than a half I added, of the mandarin orange, well, it's different flavors every morning, but this morning it happens to be mandarin orange of the Clear America, Clear American, um, sparkling water from Walmart. It's zero calories, zero caffeine, zero sodium, zero sugars, all the zero, zero, zeros. And so that's what my morning drink is. I drink with my skinny tea. So if you're interested in Teamy Skinny, if you want the Teamy Skinny Tea or any kind of Teamy products, I have a discount code in the description below. You'll receive 15% off of your total order. And orders over $35 are free shipping. And my code is LBJ15. And in, like I said, it is in the description below. Love my Teamy Tea. It's not a weight loss product but it definitely helps with bloating. It gives me energy and helps with my cravings. So I highly recommend the Teamy Skinny. I love it and I will definitely be repurchasing it once I am out of my current stash. 
All right, so let's get into the questions. These questions will finish up the Instagram portion of the questions. I have 13 questions for you that you guys have asked. And then, then the next video will move on to the YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter questions. All right, so the first question comes from Books Barks Brews, as well as Steph Arabian asked the same question. And they want to know, what is your favorite kind of music? And what are your favorite bands or singers? All right, so my very favorite kind of music will always be the 80s. I'm an 80s baby. Well, I was born in the 70s. I was born in 1975. But the 80s is my era. I like the big hair bands. I like all the 80s music is my very favorite. I grew up with the biggest, maddest, hugest crush on John Bon Jovi. My bedroom was decorated all in John Bon Jovi posters. I had a jean jacket with a Bon Jovi iron-on patch on it. I had uh, everything Bon Jovi buttons for my jean jacket. I am just an 80s rock hairband kind of girl. And that will always be my all-time favorite music. But other than that, I also like to listen to country music. That's my other favorite. And most anything of the current country music is my favorite. Um, there's, of course, some of the hot country guys that I like, like Jason Aldean and Luke Bryan. And I'm drawing a blank. One of my very favorite country music singers, though, is Martina McBride. She is one of my all-time favorites that I love her voice. I love anything she sings. Um, she's an older singer, of course. And of course, I do like some of the other older country music, like um, Billy Ray Cyrus, as quirky as that sounds. I like some of his music. Um, Tim McGraw, John Michael Montgomery. So some of the old ones, Tracy Bird. Trace Atkins, love me some Trace Atkins, big time. So those are some of my favorite singers and bands. Um, some of my other favorite 80s bands, Motley Crue, Poison, Warrant, all those big hair metal bands, rock bands. And then the second part of the question that Book Sparks Bruce asked, she asked, what does your support system look like? Family, friends, etc." I do have a really great support system. It's small, but it is a great support system. There are three people in my life that I can depend on no matter what, and I trust with all my heart, and that is my babe, that he is my best friend among anything. I have never had anybody in my life that I felt that I could trust with my heart and my soul more than I know that I can trust him. Also, my neighbor, and she, we, I've just known her for about two years now, but we have connected so deeply, and I call her mama, and I love her dearly. I know I can rely on her if I ever need anything or just to talk. I know she's always there for me, and she's an amazing woman. And I think we were just destined to be in each other's lives. We have so many coincidences. It is pretty scary. And... It, but it's also pretty scary that she, having so many of the same coincidences in life, moved right across the hall from me. So she's an amazing woman, and I love her so much. And then also my best friend that I've had since I was just a wee tyke. We have been friends since childhood. I think I was about four and she was two, or I, don't, I can't, we've been friends for so long. I don't even remember when we became friends. It was, it's was it been that long. And I know I could trust her with my life and trust her with anything that I would tell her. And she is always there for me. She's always been there for me. And I love her so much. So those are my three supports that I have in my life that I value with my life. Also, another one that I, I can't leave out is family and that is my cousin 
She has always been there for me. She drops anything to come and help me if I need it. And I so appreciate her in my life. I do have other cousins and other family members that have helped me that I appreciate a lot. But those are the ones, actually the four, that are my core people and that I depend on and I know I can depend on. So that answers that question. So the next question comes from Carlotta SR0403. And Carlotta asks, are your cats adopted or are they acquired? I think it's a little bit of both. They were strays. And of course they didn't come from an animal shelter, but they were strays. My oldest cat, Piggy, awesome story behind this. I had neighbors who had outdoor cats and they moved away and they left their cats and those cats multiplied and those cats multiplied and so on and so on and our neighborhood was very quickly overrun by stray cats and I know they tell you not to feed cats but I have a hard time and my mom had a hard time of seeing an animal go hungry and we tried to take as many as we could to the shelter, but it was hard to catch some of them because they were feral. And so my mom would feed them. And once upon a time, one day, this little gray and white kitten showed up and that was Piggy. I'll try to find a picture if I can and insert it here of Piggy as a kitten. And so my mom was like, oh, Jen, I don't want to show you what's outside. And I was like, why not? She said, because I know you'll want it. And I said, oh, really? So she took a picture of it and she showed it to me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to have that cat. So I already had a cat at the time. And he lived to be 17 years old. And my mom was just not wanting to have any more animals inside because her health was declining and me, I wasn't very, being very productive in life. So she agreed to let me bring him in during the daytime. So I would bring Piggy in and he would eat a can of food and I would cuddle him in my arms and he would sleep practically all day on my bed and sleep in my arms almost all day, every day. And then I would have to put him outside at night and then one day he went missing and he was always around this other group of cats it was a black cat was the mama cat and there were two tiger striped cats and piggy was the gray and white fluffy one the other ones were short-haired so I don't know if he was actually a sibling or if he just adopted that cat family as his own I'm not quite sure but then one day all four of those cats disappeared. There were the other cats were around, but we couldn't find those four anywhere. And I cried and I cried because my little piggy was missing. And of course I had not named him. I th maybe I had named him, I'm not sure. But I was just heartbroken because I couldn't find him. And so a few days passed and then I was in my room and I heard my mom calling me and she said, Jennifer, I have something that you'll want. And I was like, what? So I went to the steps and here's my mom holding Piggy and she said, I think this is what you've been looking for. And I was just so happy. I'm probably going to cry because I was so happy. Um, I was so happy to have him back and my mom was like, you're probably not gonna want him to go back outside, do you? And I'm like, no. And she's like, okay, you can keep him. And I was like, yes, thank you. So that's how my piggy became my baby. Um, the mother cat ended up getting killed on the road, which was very sad and unfortunate. Then another one of the brothers, well, I think it was a brother, it disappeared we don't know what happened to it and then there was one little tiger striped cat left and it started getting colder and I, my mom and I started feeling bad for him 
So we brought him in as well, but I wasn't able to bring him when I moved. So he went to my cousin's farm and lived the rest of his life a happy little outdoor barn kitty. He was very happy being an outdoor cat. I don't think he would have liked being an indoor cat. And being outdoors around here in the city, that would not be possible. So he lived the rest of his life a very happy outdoor barn kitty in the country. And my second cat, Moo, I got him, my best friend's sister-in-law actually got him for me. Her job, where her job was, there was a mother cat who had given birth to a litter of kittens in a, like a shed, an outdoor barn, kind of like a utility barn. And they were keeping an eye on them, waiting for them to get old enough so they could find homes for them. And I knew in my head I wanted a cat to name it Moo because with Piggy being Piggy, I wanted a Moo cat. And I had it in my head that I wanted a black and white fluffy cat. So when I saw the picture of these black and white cats, I was like, one of them is my baby. So I picked the little runt because they told me that the little runt, he was going to be long haired. The mother was long hair and she was fat. Well, Moo ended up being a short hair, skinny little thing, but he has gained weight since he's gotten into his older age. He's five now. Um, but it goes to show you that God knows what you need, not what you want exactly. And I could not be more happier with my babies than I am. They were the ones I meant to have. They were the ones that were meant to complete my little cat family. So. They were kind of acquired, but kind of adopted. Like I said, they weren't from a shelter, but I do completely support adopting pets from a shelter instead of, or taking in strays instead of buying them. I strongly believe in that. So now that I've told you that long story, we'll move on to the next question. All right, the next question comes from LP Badwolf, and LP asks, who taught you how to crochet? And what is your favorite thing to crochet? My mom tried very hard to teach me how to crochet. And both my mom and my great aunt crocheted beautifully. And for years, my mom tried to teach me. But my mom was right-handed and I'm left-handed. So when she was trying to teach me, it always looked backwards to me. So I had such a hard time trying to figure it out. I could crochet a chain, a long chain. I could even do a little bit of a single stitch a single crochet stitch but that was about all I could do and I got frustrated so then when I was older about I was in my 20s I started watching videos on how to crochet and I kind of picked it up from there and I kind of taught myself I knew how to read the crochet I knew how to read the patterns because she would read the patterns and my aunt would write patterns down for my mom because she had crochet books because that was before printers became a thing that people owned or computers so she would always write the patterns down for my mom and my mom would my mom made beautiful afghans I wish I would have been able to save one but I wasn't able to when I moved and that's one of the things I regret most but um, so my mom and my aunt both crocheted what is my favorite thing to crochet I have a severe case of ADD and I am not good at keeping my attention span for big projects like afghans. I have made afghans in the past, but it's very hard for me to complete them because I get bored with them very easily. So what I love to crochet most is stuffed animals, um, slippers, those kinds of small hats things that don't take a lot of time that I'm going to lose my attention span that's going to keep my attention. So those are the things that I like to crochet the most. The next question comes from Janet Decenti, and Janet asks, do you have a job outside of your home and how do you support yourself? I answered that question in the previous video, so I will have a link and the card here or here I'm not sure which side but I will have a little card for the my first Q&A video where I answered that question 
in there. And so the next question is from Tanya May. And Tanya May asks, do you live alone? I do live alone except for my two little kitty cats. Those are my roommates kind of. And let me tell you, they are definitely roommates because they want what they want when they want it. And they are definitely company. But as far as a human, I am the only human that lives in my apartment, yes. All right, the next question is from Awkward Dolphin. And Awkward Dolphin asks, if you could tell your younger self anything, what would you tell her? I would tell her to not let people put you down, not let people make you feel less than. And I know that coming from the event that happened just last week, I'm not completely in a state of being, having the best self-esteem, but I have a lot better self-esteem than I had in high school. I was so very shy in high school. I would not look people in the eye. I had absolutely almost never have eye contact with other people. I was so shy and self-conscious. I didn't really talk much in high school. Um, I didn't like school at all. And because of my own self-consciousness, thankfully I wasn't bullied a lot in school. Of course there were always the rude people that, you know, that, that's just a normal thing. But I wasn't bullied the way some people are, especially today. How people are made fun of, kids are made fun of. Um, but I think if I could be like I am now, if I could go back and be in high school and be like I am now, I would have went a lot further in my life because I am much more outspoken. I have a lot more self-esteem than I had back then and I know a lot more about life and about what matters and what doesn't and I would just tell myself to believe in myself a little bit more and that you're smarter than you thought you were. I always thought I was stupid. I always thought that I was just full of self-doubt and I would put myself down all the time and so that's what I would tell my younger self is to have more confidence in yourself. You're braver than you think, you're smarter than you think, and you're stronger than you think. So that's what I would tell my younger self. The next question is from two people asked the same question and that is Sarah Illustrator and Nala3333 and they ask how old are you and how long have you struggled with your weight? I was born in 1975 and I am 43 years old. How long have I struggled with my weight? I think I have always struggled with my weight. I remember my first diet, I was probably in fourth or fifth grade. I remember eating rice cakes with cream cheese. Um, my mom was on the cabbage soup diet. We did the cabbage soup diet when I was in grade school. Um, I was always a chubby child, so my weight was always an issue f for me for, uh, for health reasons. My mom wanted me very badly to get a hold of my weight and not let it get t to a point that it would affect me later in life, which it has obviously um, but then as I kept getting older and then as I started going through other things when I became a teenager or when I started struggling with emotional problems and that's when it got a lot worse and I think that there was a time when I was just a chubby child as some kids are but then that turned into being a compulsive overeater I remember eating a lot when I was in Grade school, I would get seconds at lunchtime. I would eat large portions of food at home. I would sneak food. I remember sneaking into the kitchen at night and sitting on the kitchen floor, getting something out of the fridge and sitting on the kitchen floor and eating it. So I've always struggled with my weight for as long as I can remember. 
The next question comes from Rita Hockard. Hockard? I hope I said that right. Do you have a job? If so, if not, what education level do you have? And what do you want to do when you grow up? That's a cute question. Um, no, I don't currently have a job. I am not able to work right now until I get the whole cancer thing taken care of as well as my weight. Um, as far as education, I have two years of community college completed. I was going for my associate's degree in human services and I plan on going back to complete that. And what do I want to be when I grow up? That is a good question. There's several things that I want to do. I want to be an addiction and recovery counselor. I want to be a social worker. I would love to learn sign language and be an interpreter. So there's a ton of different things that I would like to do when I grow up. So that's a cute question. I like that. All right, the next question comes from Andy Keeley YT. And Andy asks, where do you get your bras? I get my bras and a lot of my clothes from the common fat girl store ever that I think all big girls shop at, which is Woman Within. Um, I'm not so much of a Torrid girl. I can't really afford Torrid clothes. I do have a couple of pieces from Torrid, but as far as main shopping, and that is from Woman Within because it's more in my price range. So that's where I get my bras from. The next question is from Lexi the stylist and Lexi asks, do you have back issues? No, I do not have back issues. I have a lot of issues, but back issues are not one of them. All right, the next question comes from This Cozy House and This Cozy House asks, can you speak about sex as a bigger woman, dating and menstruation? Oh my, this is a little personal question. So if some of you guys are squeamish, you may want to turn off or skip forward here. Um, sex as a bigger woman, I've never really had a problem in that area. When I was involved with someone, um, I have not been in a relationship, a physical relationship with someone in about five years that's when my my ex passed away about five years ago and we were in a relationship for nine years um, we never had an issue with that there are ways that you can even as a big person have sex and I think that's a little that's where I'm gonna end with that I think that's a little too out there for my videos I don't want to go too much into that kind of detail I want to keep it g-rated as much as possible as far as dating, I will say dating as far as being a bigger person for me has been a really touchy subject or a touchy thing. I think it's a more of a personal issue of not so much being a bigger person dating. I've never really found I've had a problem finding someone that's interested in me. Um, I've been very fortunate enough to be in long-term relationships and I've never really been the type that has just casually dated anyone. I've always just found that one person that I wanted to be with and just was with them long term. As I said, my last relationship was nine years and my relationship before that was four years. So it's never really been an issue for me. Those things have not been. All right, as far as menstruation, I have probably went into more detail on that subject than I probably should have in a lot of my videos. Um, of course, as many of you know, I do have endometriosis as well as stage one uterine cancer. So that can make my periods very heavy and very long. Um, and that's not necessarily anything to do with my weight. That's just the conditions that I have. I will say that when you're a bigger person, a bigger woman, I think that it is very important to keep yourself clean in general, but especially when you're having your period, 
I take a lot of extra precaution in making sure I'm clean and in that area. I guess one of the bigger tips that I could give anyone, and this isn't just for bigger people, this is probably for any woman. I am a big advocate of using baby wipes and the always feminine wipe products. Um, I like to assure that I am clean. I don't like to have any kind of an air of not smelling good or smelling off, especially as we all know, as women know, that they can have an odor during that time of the month. So baby wipes are my best friend. I go through a ton of baby wipes and I rather spend a little extra money on baby wipes just to make sure that I am clean and everything is in check in that area. I also use like a feminine um, body spray as well as powder and body sprays. So I would recommend that at any time of the month, but especially during your period, it's always good to take extra precautions in that area. So that's all I have to say about that subject. The next question comes from Barbells and Babies 716. I love that username too. Barbells and Babies. That's cute. And Barbells and Babies asks, do you have any siblings? If so, how many and how old are they? I do not have any siblings. I'm an only child, an only brat. Um, sometimes I think I would have wanted some siblings and then other times like, nah, I'm good. And I'm okay with being an only child. Of course, now that my mom has passed away, um, I, sometimes I think it would have been kind of nice to have siblings to be able to go through the loss of my mom, to have somebody who understands my situation and be close to me. But I didn't, so I guess you can't really miss what you've never had. So I don't really think about it all that often, but... I'm an only child. And the last question from Instagram comes from Cha Cha Magnolia. Love that username too. And Cha Cha asks, what are you most looking forward to? So what am I most looking forward to? I think one of the things that I'm most looking forward to is going to the beach and seeing the ocean. I am so excited about that. And I cannot even tell you how amazing I think that will be and I know that it's not going to be disappointing because I've always felt a draw to the water and to the ocean and like that's where I was meant to be. So that's what I'm looking forward to most. So that wraps up part two of my question and answer video and like I said this is a collab with Amy's life journey and you can check out her channel. I will leave a link for her channel in the description below and she's doing a question and answer video as well and i will see you guys back next time for part three and we'll start on the youtube comments and questions see you guys soon bye